Hey, what's up? Mr. Bill here. Today I'm going to show you Splitter. Uh, check this out. I can load a track into Ableton, uh, which is a full stereo wave. Sounds like this. And I can hit this button on this Max for Live device built by Azuki called Splitter. And it'll say Splitter is running. This may take a minute. We need to give this like, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds. And what will happen is it will spit out stems from a stereo wave file, which is pretty fucking crazy. Bam, check that out. We have stems from this stereo wave file. So let's check out what they sound like. We have a bass stem. We have a drum stem. Uh, we have a vocal stem. And we have a stem called other, which is essentially everything else like instruments and whatnot. Cool, so how is this possible? Uh, essentially, a company called Deezer, who I believe is a French company similar to Spotify, created this technology called Splitter, which they say works using AI, and they made it open source, meaning anyone can access the code, I believe. And I, I believe it would probably work via spectral FFT stuff, which I don't really understand the extent to how that works, so I will link a video that does. But essentially, because they made this thing open source, people like Azuki were able to take it and apply it in this way where they make devices out of it. And she has made a device called Splitter that works in Max for Live. So you load it into a channel, uh, highlight a clip in your session, hit start, and then bam, it just spits stems out, which is crazy. Okay, so full transparency, installing this thing is somewhat of a pain in the ass. And uh, as far as I know, Azuki does not offer support for her specific device that she made. Um, but essentially there's two uh, installation options. One is that you install what's called a VM or a virtual machine on your machine. Uh, and that already has all of the libraries installed to make this splitter thing work. Uh, and that VM is called Docker. And if you read the installation instructions uh, on Azuki's Bandcamp page, which I will link in the description. You can figure out how to do all of that. Uh, and if you can't figure it out, well, then that's on you. The thing costs a dollar. So um, yeah, I mean, you can't expect too much for that. Uh, and then option two is by installing all of the libraries necessary locally, um, which is kind of difficult because you need to install three things. You need to install Splitter itself. You need to install something called FFmpeg, which is an audio uh, processing library. And then you also need to install Python. <clears throat> uh, and then this thing should work. So it's kind of difficult to get working. But once you get it working, as you can see, it's as simple as just loading this plugin on hitting start and getting stems out of it, which is a pretty powerful tool to have, in my opinion, for a dollar. So it's worth putting some effort in, I think, to figure out how to get this working. All right, so let's talk about some use cases when you might use something like this. So I figured out five. Uh, and we're going to go through each of those individually. All right, so one really cool use for this is uh, by extracting the stems out of, say, an older uh, piece of music, you can use it uh, creatively for sampling in hip hop. So I'll show you an example of that. Here is a track that I wrote for uh, the intro of my podcast, and it's not quite finished, and I feel like it needs some little points of interest and cuts and stuff like that in the track, and therefore uh, we can use Splitter to achieve that. So here's what the track sounds like uh, currently. So it's already kind of hip hoppy in nature, but let's make it more hip hoppy by adding little cuts of samples from stems that Splitter generates for us. So, so what we're gonna do here to begin is we are going to load in a track. So I have an example track here. We're gonna load that into a channel. And then on that channel, we are gonna add Splitter. So I'll grab that. Now I pretty much just need to make sure this thing is highlighted. Basically it just looks for anything that's highlighted on a channel and then it does the extraction on that. So let's highlight it, hit start. And once again, we're gonna wait about 30 seconds and then this will spit stems out for us into a folder. Cool, so we have the stems here. I'm probably most interested in the other stem or the vocal stem uh, for something like hip hop sampling, right? So let's get rid of the channel that we just did the extraction on. And then I'm gonna add a MIDI channel here. And I'm literally just gonna drag one of these samples, say other, onto that MIDI channel. And that's gonna create a simpler for us. So now if I put this simpler on slice mode, you can see it slices that sample into a bunch of different parts. And if I turn the sensitivity down, you can change where those uh, cuts are happening. So 
Um, I'm going to put the sensitivity at probably like 90%. So we, or let's say 92%, that was looking pretty good. So we get a bunch of cuts uh, throughout the track. So now if I play some keys on my QWERTY keyboard, uh, essentially inputting MIDI into this simpler, you get little cuts basically. It sounds already sort of hip hoppy. So I happen to know for a fact that this uh, is, I think a fifth out of key. So I think it needs to go up seven semitones or down five, which I guess is a fourth. Uh, and I believe that should then be in key with the, with the track, just because I tested this before the video. Um. So now if we just go through and be very selective about the cuts we're using and, and the times at which we're using those cuts, uh, we can probably get a pretty cool sequence here. Um, let me also chuck this into my sidechain group, just so it's also getting sidechain, so it sounds a little more mixed, and we'll have a play around with that. Uh, maybe this isn't key. Ah, it's five semitones up. Okay, so let's uh, have a play around with this. That already sounds dank. Uh, so that's one cool use is you could use it for hip hop cuts in this way. Another cool use uh, we could use Splitter for is by adding drum fills and breaks into things. So these are, uh, there's a lot of breaks and drum fills out there already, but it's really nice sometimes to just have more. I mean, always more drums is always good. Uh, and Split is great at that because it extracts drums. So using uh, the same file that we just used, let's take the drums here and drag those into our drum group onto an empty channel. So what we have is this, it's essentially just breaks. So they sound a little bit spectral and messy, but in my opinion, that's kind of cool because not a lot of drums sound that way. So they can also add pretty interesting character to your stuff, especially if you mix them properly with like soothe and whatnot and get rid of all the weird resonances. You can actually get some pretty cool results out of this. So uh, I'm gonna try and line this up with my track and then warp it. And actually, I'm going to show you an interesting trick for warping here too. Uh, so I'm going to turn um, my click track on and just start playing this. So it's almost in time anyway. Uh, and instead of warping it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pitch knob down here to get this in time with the track. So I can almost do this visually. You can sort of see where the snares are. So this is a snare right here. Now let's turn the grid off just so I can highlight it. So that's a snare. This is also a snare, and this is also a snare. So if I use the sense detune down here in the sample window and just detune this a little bit, you can notice that those snares start to line up with the grid. Uh, and that is my preferred way of warping actually. I think it's less destructive than like uh, hitting warp and stretching stuff. Um, I, I guess it's essentially the same as warping on repitch, but I just think it's easier to do it this way and just visualize it on the grid. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is um, take some of the lows out and then maybe let's apply some soothe because I know that this has some resonances in it and we're gonna use soothe to get rid of some of those. Uh, if you don't have soothe, don't worry about it. All it is is it's a spectral resonance remover. I like it because I'm anal about mixing. Uh, it's basically removing this stuff. So all the spectral artifacts that come from extracting things in the way that Splitter does. Uh, so now what we get is this, a nice break over the top of our beat. So not all of it is sitting completely perfectly, but this is probably where you could go in and uh, toggle warping on. Uh, and then from there, you can maybe go in and you know stretch things so it sits with the groove a bit better or just remove things completely. So for instance, we might go... So these two kicks here sound a little bit weird. We might just remove those. Yeah, again, these kicks sound a little weird just because they're off with the groove of the tune. So yeah, that's another use for Splitter is you can easily get breaks out of it and layer them into tunes and fill out your drum beats a little more and make them sound more human. Okay, cool. Another thing that I have an issue with sometimes in my music is I'll make these really edit heavy segments and it's just too much digital stuff. So Splitter can be really cool at giving me some stems to work with that are not so digital and a little more organic sounding to cut into those digital segments 
and uh, give a little bit of contrast. And that can sometimes make a section really pop and not sound so, so gray. I find if you don't paint enough with contrasting colors, everything can sound a little bit gray. So here's an example of a section where I believe that is the case. And then I can show you how I would fix it with Splitter. So this is what we have so far. So it's a cool section, but it's just very digital and there's not a lot of organic elements in there and I would like some organic elements in there. So what we're going to do is, once again, we're going to use Splitter uh, to add some. So I'm going to go back to my examples folder and grab this example track that I thought would work well and we're going to load Splitter. And just to sort of prove a point, I'm going to put Splitter on the master. It doesn't have to be on the track that you're uh, rendering from it just has the thing that you're rendering just has to be highlighted it can, splitter can actually just be anywhere in the session so i'm going to hit start here and we're going to render stems from uh, nancy holloway sand and rain cool so we got the same stems we always get from it bass drums other and vocals so I'm most interested, I think, um, for this one in the other stem, which is going to be more instruments like horns and uh, probably stringed instruments and just everything else that isn't bass, drums and vocals pretty much. So what I'm going to do here is create a channel underneath all of these uh, digital edits and I'm going to drag the other stem in and then we can sort of just scroll through this file and I can actually show you my process now for cutting uh, files like this into a section like this as well. So first of all, I would turn the channel off that I have the file on just so I can visually see it. And this is kind of going to be like my file storage channel for lack of a better word. And then I'm going to create another channel and this is kind of going to be like my cutting board. This is where I'm going to cut the samples to. So uh, let's just have a listen to this file real quick. So that's a nice little string stab right there. So we can maybe try and cut that onto a channel, uh, onto our cutting board channel and just see how that sounds in context. That sounds horrible. All right, so let's, uh, this is a really quick way I've found to scroll through the sample that you're using. Um, select the sample that you're using, hit Control D, hit your zero key to turn the sample that you just duplicated next to it off. And then on this file, drag this playhead that's holding sort of the end of the sample out to the very furthest position it can be. And then this first one, you can see, you can just grab that little playhead flag and just drag it around wherever you want. Uh, and that's just a really easy way you can scroll through and check different parts of the file to see if something's gonna work. So uh, let's try putting a hit maybe like here. That could be pitched up one semitone. So this hit here works, um, and now we just need to find a different hit for the first one. So let's turn this clip back on and just like scroll around here and find a different hit that might work here. Maybe just the end of this uh, hit could work. So let's just cut that and maybe put that here. And perhaps we could take another section of it and reverse into that, like so. That sounds pretty cool. And what if we put pitch drop on the end of this? This is another Max for Live device that I love. And hit the activate button just at the end so it goes like this. That sounds sick, but now it also sounds more digital again, which is the whole problem I was trying to solve in the first place. All right, and the final example I want to show you of why Splitter is really cool is you can just use it for pure sound design. So for instance, um, I'll just take the same samples that we just created with Splitter uh, a minute ago, and let's just drag the bass one in, for instance. So we just have a bass stem, it sounds like this. Sounds pretty much just like normal bass, but that could easily be neuro bass. So let's put on uh, something like, I don't know, OTT. 
and let's duplicate it a couple of times. Oh, that sounds a little bit nasty. Let's get rid of maybe three of them. And then let's try, say, an auto filter on notch mode. And then let's get rid of some of those spectral resonances with Soothe. Actually, let's do this at the start before the OTTs to sort of fix it at the source a bit. Like that is a pretty interesting sounding bass in my opinion. And then also you could take elements like this and stretch them. So for instance, let's hold warping and then I'll hold my shift key, grab the end of that file and just stretch it out. And now what do we have? Something like this. Sounds pretty interesting to me. So... Uh uh, let's add some more harmonics here with an overdrive and just uh, set the filter to sort of the middle range and we're just going to drive that middle area of the signal. Oh yeah, that's sounding quiet mids. Ugh. Yeah, these spectral resonances in the high frequencies are getting a little nasty. All this stuff. Pretty cool. Uh, now we have this processing chain. Let's just try other uh, files on there. So we could try literally the other file. Uh, we could use Ubic T at the start of this chain and put it on some sort of cutting mode. That sounds pretty sick in my opinion. That is like something that could be used as a really cool fill into another section, just and then bam, into another drop. That'd be really cool. Anyway, that's Splitter. It's very cool. I suggest you go get it. Thanks to Deezer for making the technology. Thanks to Azuki for applying it into a Max for Live device so us uh, Ableton peasants can easily use it. Uh, thanks to all of you for watching. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe and hit the notification bell so when I put new videos out, you get notified. I mostly put podcasts on this channel at this point, but if you're interested in those, sick. And if not, uh, cool, doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good day.